Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. The Munich Peace Conference is kind of winding down now as the weekend ends here. Russian Insider brought out a very interesting article on that of Mike Pence, Vice President of the United States, and the comments that he brought uh, to the table showing that the U.S. is behind the European Union, behind NATO, and their stance not against an aggressive Russia, but as Mike Pence calls it, an assertive Russia. The article on Russian Insider titles Lavrov tells it right to Pence's smug face. Russia will end U.S.-led world order. But the question is, is this ending the new world order altogether, or is it only changing gears, shifting to another world order, another new world order besides the original one that was started. Uh, according to the article here, Pence told a room full of Washington lapdogs that the United States would continue to hold Russia accountable. Then Lavrov went up to the podium and straightened him out. That's their aiming title there, aiming to calm European fears about U.S.-Russian ties. Vice President Mike Pence told world leaders Saturday that the United States will still stand firm against Moscow while also seeking avenues for cooperation. This is the opening line to CNN's report about the predictable saber rattling that took place at Munich Security Conference on Saturday. But Sergei Lavrov, when he stepped up, he continued to dominate this particular weekend's Munich uh, Security Conference that is going on with this statement that he spoke back in response to Vice President Pence, making it quite clear what Russia felt in their response to his uh, response to Vice President Pence. Lavrov said that the time when the West called the shots was over and dismissing NATO as a relic of the Cold War. Uh, he added, I hope that the world will choose a democratic world order, a post-West one in which each country is defined by its sovereignty. Lavrov said Moscow wanted to build relations with Washington, which would be pragmatic with mutual respects and acknowledgement of our responsibility for global stability. But you know, what's really interesting though, is this whole idea of the new world order that comes up in this. And it really doesn't do away with a new world order. It's only changing the face of the new world order and moving into a different direction. All right, now I would like to share a little bit more of the article here with you, and then I'm gonna go into a little bit more about this so it makes sense. He rarely, uh, the crisis in Ukraine made it clear that Washington wanted blood, but the U.S. led crimes against the people of Syria is what made Russia realize that they are not dealing with normal, reasonable people. Washington is a cable of psychopaths. That's what he says in this article. The war in Syria has also ushered in a new era. We are witnessing a seismic shift in how international relations are conducted. Uh, Russia and Iran just proved that fighting the bully works and other countries have taken notice. Lavrov's comments are more than just an invitation to all nations to join Russia in the creation of a new world order based on state sovereignty, but international consensus. So again, the new world order has never changed. And the insider that I had that spoke to me about BRICS a little while back was definitely clear that BRICS was only the beginning of the real new world order, an entire new system with a new banking system, everything coming together. And that no, it wasn't just Russia separating itself, trying to build a new economic front other than that of the West, but it was really the true new world order. You're going to see that in just a moment. But first, let me look at the wording that we saw already, and I've seen this over and over. It is called a liberal democracy or a liberal world order is something that Lavrov has referred to what the, the United States is doing. And by the way, the liberal world order or the new world order, the original ideology behind this was to do away with all nationalities, to come together as a one world order under a one world government and a one world religion, effectively doing away with everything else and then therefore being governed by one non-elected uh, govern, governance. Very much like the European Union, they have government officials that are never elected by the people. So therefore, 
It is a totalitarian system. And this is what the New World Order was supposed to be. So like in this article here uh, on Baha'i.org, Western liberal democracy as a New World Order. The triumph of the Western social order was widely heralded in the closing decades of the 20th century. The end of ideology was proclaimed in an age of global prosperity anticipated, driven by the twin forces of a global free market capital, uh, capitalism and liberal democracy. In the ensuing years, the vacuum left the collapse of the Soviet Union along with new tensions created by a perceived clash of civilizations. So this was part of the New World Order and it was also titled the Liberal New World Order as well. But then something very strange began to happen once we seen, especially when we began to see the isolation of Russia by the United States, Russia began to form their own alliance with other nations and they formed what they called BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China, um, and, um, uh, gosh, I forget what the S actually stood for, but uh, anyway, it's another country as well. These were the nations that put together and, and started their own system. And for a long time, I just felt like this was Russia trying to bring together new trading partners in order to keep Russia going. But then one of the insiders that I knew that worked uh, with a very close man inside the Turkish government stated to me that BRICS was actually the real New World Order and that they are working on doing away with the other systems. So as I see Lavrov's comment, well, I can appreciate the fact of his strong stance against uh, the, you know, the, the, the push that Obama has done in his legacy to try to thwart everything that Russia is doing and making Russia look like the bad guy. But at the same token, I can also see that Russia is actually heading a new world order totally separate from the one that was started by the United States and other nations. So this may be the ultimate plan to begin with. Now it says here, Russia is the target of a multifaceted uh, asymmetric campaign of destabilization that, that has employed economic, political, and psychological forms of warfare, each which has been specifically designed to inflict maximum damage on the Kremlin. This is why we have seen a major battle between the United States and NATO against Russia, and even take note about Brazil, how Brazil's economy has nearly collapsed as part of becoming a part of uh, this BRICS alliance that Russia put together. China also has been targeted on many occasions, India, and this has all been tried to, to, try to thwart this new world order that, as, as Lavrov says, that every nation keeps its own sovereignty. But the point is, though, is it doesn't change the fact that it's a new world order. And that's what's concerning to me. Notice also, you want to talk about Lavrov dominating over this uh, weekend's uh, uh, conference there inside of Munich, Germany. This article here that was translated on the stalkerzone.com, Ukrainian journalist Poroshenko stopped applauding Merkel after her comment about Russian European Union. Again, Merkel even taken a major change in her own stance towards Russia. Now that they see that Donald Trump is actually trying to back off on the threats against Russia and Russia being the bad enemy and stuff, and of course it may be that President Trump is working with Russia to go along with the new world order that's in the new direction. Or perhaps maybe it was never a new direction. Maybe this is what will actually replace all the global currencies that we have today. The IMF, that is, who regulates, who's the number one currency running the world's economy, which generally is the U.S. dollar. Maybe this is the preparation for when there is an economic collapse that this will be the new system that takes over. So I'm very concerned about it. But watch what, watch what Angela, what happened in this uh, meeting here this weekend, what Angela Merkel was brought out about her. The German Chancellor, Angela Merkel, speaking at the Munich Security Conference, called the war in Donbass an internal Ukrainian conflict, reported the Ukrainian journalist, Yuri Dudkin, on his Facebook page. And I see him pictured right there on your screen. Now that kind of blew me away because Merkel has always, as long as Obama was in power, always referred to this as the Russian aggression, never an internal conflict. What made that change? Now, this is what, this is what he actually writes. Uh, the Ukrainian journalist writes here, right now in Munich, for Merkel called the war in Donbass an internal political conflict in Ukraine. No Russian troops, but only Russian support of separatists. 
The German chancellor broke the mold of Ukro propaganda, but they do not give up. Now on all the channels, they misinterpret the uh, Budenkanzlerin uh, uh, Buden speech in the most sophisticated manner. Also, he added in the comments to post, sitting in the hall and listening to Merkel, uh, Petro Poroshenko even stopped to applaud, having heard from her lips about the union of Europe and Russia from Vlavovsk to Lisbon. <clears throat> Answering the questions of journalists after her speech, the German chancellor urged not to bury the Minsk agreements. We didn't succeed to establish a ceasefire more than three, four days. So from a formal point of view, we can't begin to political process now. But as we are reasonable people, Ukraine declared its readiness to begin parallel work. That's why various contact and work groups were created. I call not to speak about failures, but concentrate on ensuring success, declared Merkel. Nothing would be better if we could fight along with Russia against Islamic terrorism and have normal economic relations. Work on a free trade zone from uh, Vladivostok to Lisbon. But we can't betray principles of territorial integrity. That's why we need a political decision. And I'm ready to give it much time and effort, added the German chancellor. That's a complete about face, 100%. No more Russian aggression, but much like that of President Trump, now Merkel is starting to take the same stance that Donald Trump did. And that was trying to work with Russia. After all, if you remember, Merkel was one of the ones that did not want to go along with this sanctions against Russia. But the Obama administration kind of forced her hand in doing so. And then, of course, the strange downing of the German plane that killed all these youths over Fran the French Alps. What was that all about? A lot of conspiracy going on about the downing of that plane. And was it actually a message sent to Merkel that if she didn't go along with the sanctions, then there would be consequences to be had? Well, Merkel, after the downing of that plane, if you ever watched the political side of all this, that's when she really came on board putting sanctions against Russia. But had nothing to do with that, did it? It was only pressure. And now Petro Poroshenko is finding himself more and more at odds with even the European Union members not being so supportive of his war against the Ukraine. At this meeting, though, there was an agreement for a ceasefire, or not so much a ceasefire, but a pulling back of the heavy equipment, heavy arms fighting on the, the contact line around Donetsk. But it didn't mean that Poroshenko is not trying to gain territory in the process today and yesterday as he launched an offensive three different directions on Donetsk already. So he is definitely trying to take back East Ukraine. But now he doesn't have Merkel on his side to say that the Russians are the aggressors in this case, not even Russian soldiers involved, but the separatists only being supported by Russia and looking to rebuild that financial relationship between Russia and the European Union. Maybe there is a new world order with new ideals behind it. Not that I support any kind of new world order, period. To me, it's nothing but a global dominance and the Pope of Rome will no doubt still run all of it. Also, another news already happened. Lorenzo on his uh, Twitter account shared this particular image, very shocking image of a bomb that went off uh, near Del El Zord. Uh, and it is a monstrosity of a bomb. Some people actually noted on there, it looked more like a weather phenomenal than a bomb, but it is a bomb. And it is alleged that the US-led coalition did the airstrike that caused this massive explosion. I actually could not help but wonder if it was not a tactical nuke. If you look at some of the footages here, uh, this was done inside of uh, Ukraine near the airport of the Donetsk region back during 2014. And just to kind of give you an idea, look at the plumes of smoke that were coming up in these images here. Uh, unbelievable, but of course once it was two different uh, bombs that went off here, they were even suggesting then in Ukraine that this was possibly a tactical nuke that was being used. Uh, you can see in the video footage here, you're going to have a second one. One's already gone off, creating this plume of smoke that is just towering all the way up to the sky. Uh, then a second one will go off as well. 
lower the volume on this, you'll actually hear it go off after the uh, sound wave carries out. But imagine in the picture we see in Del El Zord the same type of thing, and then as these uh, plumes of smoke go up, um, covering such a vast area. So no doubt, it's definitely not a phenomena of the weather, but it is indeed um, some type of explosion that went on. And, uh, and that, again, happened in Ukraine in 2014 uh, near the Donetsk airport. So as we say, we look at this right here, you cannot help but wonder um, if it wasn't possibly tactical nukes being used, a small nuclear device being detonated inside the ground. Have no idea, but nonetheless, it's very large. The Syrian military also has reported about this. Uh, they've actually suggested other possibilities of the type bomb that was used. Um, but a little bit over my head there. As we close in our news, I'd like to just share with you a bit of good news from the Huffington Post there. There's a small sitting setting aside a thousand acres for bees and butterflies. That's happening uh, in uh, Cedar Rapids. Uh, we'll prepare for the first 188 acres in uh, ensued public land for habitat conversation with pesticide-free havens filled with native prairie grasses and wildflowers. It's actually being done for butterflies and bees, but as it states in the article here, no doubt many mammal life will enjoy such a habitat free of pesticides and other type things. Uh, the plan is to expand it to 1,000 acres uh, near Cedar Rapids there. I think it's an awesome thing to have happen, and I think it's a good thing to end on a bit of good news here on Israeli News Live. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching us, watching here Israeli News Live. Show.